All right, we're back at it today and we're going to continue unit eight of the AP World Curriculum to talking about the effects of the Cold War. And what you need to take out of this, uh, we're going to be living in the theme of governance here. And the Cold War is going to produce new military alliances, including NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the Warsaw Pact. And it will lead to nuclear proliferation, the spread of nuclear weapons and proxy wars between uh, and within post-colonial states in Latin America, Asia, and Africa. So really today, we're just going to run through the steps on how we get to these Cold War alliances and then the effects of, of a lot of these uh, Cold War alliances that develop. So following World War II, one of the most pressing issues for the, for the uh, victors of the war is what to do with the defeated German nation. At the Yalta Conference held in uh, February of 1945, a divided Germany uh, between the Western Allies and the Soviet Union was agreed upon, and you can see that behind me. The capital of Berlin, which is going to be right there. This is really hard to do. I'm not a weatherman. The capital of Berlin was also divided between the same nations, but existed wholly within the USSR sector of Eastern Germany. So when the US, the UK, and France agreed to combine their zones of occupation in 1948, um, the, uh, the Soviet Union saw this as a threat from the capitalist West and launched what was called the Berlin Blockade, closing West Berlin off from their Western zones. The Berlin blockade would be met with an allied response called the Berlin Airlift, where for 11 months, hundreds of thousands of flights will take everything that those 2 million people of West Berlin needed to survive during the blockade. In the aftermath of the blockade, after Stalin relented and ended it, the, so the United States and the Western powers organized NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and they pledged mutual support and cooperation against any threats that could come from the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union would follow with the development of the Warsaw Pact, which was an alliance of Eastern European allies and the Soviet Union to aid in the case of a Western attack. Berlin will remain a point of controversy, uh, resulting in eventually the construction of a Berlin Wall in 1961 that permanently separates the divided city and, and eliminates the ability for people to move from East Berlin into West Berlin. As Cold War tensions are going to move away from Europe to other parts of the globe, we're going to see other alliances form uh, to prevent the spread of communism. In Asia, CETO, the Southeast Asian Treaty Organization, will feature the U.S. and the U.K., Australia, New Zealand, France, and, and other nations that are attempting to stop the spread of communism in Asia. And um, is the CENTO, the Central Treaty Organization of the UK, Iran, Iraq, and Pakistan, all in, in Central Asia and in the Middle East, will also be formed with the same goal in mind. Now that we have this, these established alliances and the understanding that each side is trying to prevent the other side's expansion, we're going to take a closer look at some proxy wars. Uh, the ideological conflict between the U.S. and the Soviet Union contributed to many hot wars during this Cold War conflict, where the superpowers would avoid fighting each other directly, but they're going to often fight with or against proxies of their rival. This word proxy just means next to, like proximity. Uh, conflicts in Korea, Vietnam, Cuba, Angola, Nicaragua, Afghanistan can all be considered proxy wars during the Cold War. We're going to give a closer look at a few of them. The Korean War, um, it, after World War II ended with a divided Korea, the, the Soviet Union occupying the northern portion of Korea and the United States occupying the south. The early Cold War focused on Germany, so the Americans and the Soviets just left Korea to local control. And in 1950, the communist North Korea, led by Kim Il-sung, the grandfather of, of today's leader of North Korea, um, invaded South Korea. A United Nations military force led by the United States entered into South Korea to drive the communists back to the north. And then China entered that war to support the North Koreans, and this violent conflict between these parties would continue until 1953. In the end, the Koreas remained permanently divided. Another proxy war is, is Vietnam. Following a bloody war for independence uh, from 1945 to 1954 with France, Vietnam would be divided between a pro-Soviet North and a pro-American South. 
The U.S. supported the government of the South in hopes of defending it from being overtaken by the communists in North Vietnam. And obviously, the story of Korea is fresh in everybody's mind. This became part of what was known as the domino theory, the concern that if Vietnam were to become communist, the rest of Southeast Asia and beyond would also fall to communism. Uh, a decade of violent conflict would end with the North Vietnamese victory and a united country under a communist government. In the Western Hemisphere, Cuba becomes a proxy of the Cold War as the, United, as the Soviet Union would support a communist government of Fidel Castro in Cuba following a revolution where Castro overthrew a, an American-supported leader. The Americans attempted to oust, anti, uh, oust Castro in what was known as the Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. This failed and it pushed Castro towards the Soviet Union to get security from the USSR. Um, that allowed the Soviet Union to put nuclear warheads and long range missiles in Cuba that would lead to 1962's Cuban Missile Crisis. Conflict was narrowly avoided, but Cuba would remain a Soviet supported state throughout the duration of the Cold War. And the fact that it was only 90 miles away from uh, the United States made this um, a major sticking point in the Cold War story. The tense situation from the nuclear threats around the Cuban Missile Crisis did result in the creation of what was known as a hotline, an actual telephone link between Moscow and Washington, where the two parties could talk to each other if they ever got into a crisis again, and the signing of a nuclear test ban treaty. In Africa, uh, following a victory in a war for independence from, uh, from Portugal, the country of Angola would descend into a civil war um, as colonial borders took no consideration for ethnic differences. Um, in this civil war, the Soviets and the Cubans and the United States each supported um, adversaries sending weapons and, in some cases, men, the Cubans sent soldiers, into Angola to fight. The support from outside nations prolonged the conflict and brought more death and destruction. And then in the 1970s, uh, the Soviet Union sent armies into Afghanistan in 1979 to support a pro-Soviet government there that threatened, uh, was threatened by a popular revolution. The Americans supported the revolutionary Mujahideen fighters with weapons that ultimately led to the defeat and withdrawal of the Soviet Union in 1989. So looking back at, at these major events of the, of the Cold War, I uh, quickly led to um, international military alliances uh, like NATO and the Warsaw Pact uh, that were meant to stop the spread of their rival ideologies. While the Americans and the Soviets never directly fought each other, these proxy wars were fought around the world with support from Cold War superpowers. And conflicts in Korea, Vietnam, Angola, and Afghanistan would bring tremendous death and destruction to many corners of the globe during the Cold War era as they were fought as proxy wars for the Soviets or Americans.